Ooh. Is potato or sweet potato better for your blood sugar? And can we even eat potatoes if we are pre-diabetic, diabetic, or insulin resistant? Well, in today's video, I'm doing another blood sugar experiment where I will be testing how potatoes impact my blood sugar. Like my usual blood sugar experiments, I'm gonna make this as realistic and scientific as possible. So Google told me that one serving of potato is 5.3 ounces. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure that on my food scale now. And for white potato, which is what we're gonna start with, 5.3 ounces is about 26 grams of carbs. And nobody eats potato by itself, or actually, that's not true. One of my favorite snacks growing up as a kid was getting a small potato, cutting it in half, sticking it in the microwave, and topping it with country crock margarine. Um, but I don't think that's normal. So I'm going to pair my potato with what I feel like people usually eat potatoes with, which is meat and vegetables. So I have some uh, St. Louis ribs that I made the other day in the Instant Pot slash broiled in my oven. It was really, really good. So I'm going to eat some of that, which again, I'll measure out. And then also some salad, which I will measure out as well. And then I'm going to top my potato with some grass-fed butter because potatoes and butter, that's just magic. So we're going to do that. <sighs> I don't know why I'm doing this blood sugar experiment. I think initially I thought it would be interesting to do a comparison of how the different potatoes impact my blood sugar, but now I'm like, why? I mean, I already know it's gonna be really bad. But you know what? I bought these potatoes and I've committed, so I'm gonna do this. All right, I'm putting my butter on. Let's do even 10 grams All right this potato does not look appetizing whatsoever all right, so I'm about to start eating my meal. I have my salad and my meat, and I'm gonna eat that first, actually. And if you guys wanna see a recipe video on how I make my St. Louis ribs, go ahead and leave that in the comments below, and I can definitely do that for you. It is really, really good. And then I'm gonna eat my potato with the butter on it. And honestly, it doesn't look very great. I put it in the air fryer, and it really, really dried out the potato, and it was really hard to peel, and I'm pretty sure I burned my fingers trying to peel it quickly because um, I'm impatient. But regardless, I'm gonna go ahead and eat this and then I'm gonna check my blood sugar at the one hour mark and again at the two hour mark and let's see what happens. A side note, so I think that the serving of salad and meat is smaller than a typical serving. Google told me that one serving of beef would be about 65 grams. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think my portion is 39 grams, so a little bit on the smaller side. But regardless, I mean, I, I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna be eating the same amount tomorrow. So in terms of consistency, we're okay. So I just wanted to point that out though. I don't know if eating more meat or more salad would help with the blood sugar spike that I'm anticipating. Maybe, maybe not. But regardless, this is what we're doing today. So I'll check back in with you soon. I have been proven wrong. This potato is delicious. So delicious. All right, so I am back here now for my one hour check. And as I am prepping to test my blood sugar here, let me go over the carb count of what I just ate. So according to my calculations, the salad, which was basically just romaine lettuce and um, just a tiniest, like less than one teaspoon of ranch dressing. So the salad was about 2.1 grams of carbs. The um, ranch was about one gram of carbs. And when I calculate my carbs, I always like to kind of over calculate it to be safe. Um, the ribs had about five grams of carbs and then the white potato had 26 grams of carbs for a total of 34.1 grams of carbs. So let's see what that does to my blood sugar. I'm not feeling great to be honest, but I did enjoy that potato. 146. So I went from 90 to 146, which is quite a high spike. That is a 56 point spike. I'm not shocked, obviously, because I knew it was, wasn't was gonna be good. I guess the point of this video 
at this point knowing that potatoes are not great for me is to just see if there is a difference in the impact on my blood sugar between white potatoes and sweet potatoes so um, i will check back in again at the two hour mark back now for my two hour check and the air conditioner is running behind me so if you hear that buzzing sound that's what it is so two hours in now let's see where my blood sugar is at and i wanted to let you know that per a viewer suggestion i started reading the book mastering diabetes um, and wow that book just completely goes against everything i've learned about blood sugar management um, mastering diabetes promotes a high carb plant-based diet which includes foods like potatoes and sweet potatoes and to my understanding you can have potatoes and sweet potatoes without limit if you follow the diet that they prescribe. So if any of you have read that book and have any thoughts about it, please leave it in the comments below because it really is so counterintuitive to what I feel like I've learned about managing blood sugar. And actually it's made me question whether I might have LADA or 1.5 diabetes. So I don't know, I'm gonna have to look into that. But oh, my blood sugar is back down to 92. So back down to baseline. Okay, so this is the thing, right? Some people say that it doesn't matter what your one hour number is, as long as your two hour number is back down to baseline, then you're good. Even if the one hour is a spike, it really doesn't matter. As long as your body can bring you back down to baseline at the two hour mark. And some people, and I follow more of this line of thinking, which is you wanna try to avoid any spikes altogether. So even if your number is back down to baseline by the two hour mark, if your number spiked at that one hour mark, it means that you're doing damage to your body. So let me know what you think um, there's such a different school of thought however I've found that when I'm eating whole foods as much as possible in its natural form that even if my blood sugar does spike at the one hour mark it usually always comes back down to baseline at the two hour mark so the potato right all I did was stick it in the air fryer and ate it with some butter versus if I were to eat french fries where I'm processing it by frying it in oil then I notice that my blood sugar tends to stay elevated longer so if again I'm eating food in its whole form as naturally as possible and my blood sugar is coming back down to normal at the two hour mark does that mean that it's okay to eat and again according to mastering diabetes potatoes and sweet potatoes are great and you can eat them really without limit so i really would like to know what you all think because i'm confused and i have no idea Regardless, I will be back again to test sweet potatoes this time, eating the same amount of salad, the same amount of my St. Louis ribs, and we'll see if sweet potato is better for my blood sugar than white potato. I'm back now at the one hour mark. I'm about to test my blood sugar. Let's quickly go over the carb count. So um, 5.3 ounces of sweet potato is five more grams of carbs than white potato. So a total of 31 grams of carbs. So when we add up the salad and the ribs and the potatoes, the total carb count comes out to 39.1 grams of carb. So I did test my number pre-meal and I was sitting at 85. So let's see where we are at now at the one hour mark. And sweet potato is supposed to be better for blood sugar because it contains more fiber. So it's lower on the glycemic index. Ooh, my blood sugar is 158. Yikes. So a bigger spike than with the white potato actually a much bigger spike right because 58 a 73 point spike with the sweet potato i mean 
I, I knew that this was gonna happen. When I had gestational diabetes, I had the smallest little sweet potato paired with a baby bell cheese. And clearly the baby bell cheese was not enough fat and protein to balance out the carbs because my blood sugar spiked to 168, I wanna say. So, um, I mean, I, I, I'm not surprised. Sweet potato is supposed to be better for your blood sugar, again, because it's high in fiber, but it's sweeter. So it contains more sugars. So 158, not good. I would like to see if at the two hour mark, it's gonna come back down to normal like it did with the white potato. So let's see. Last check here for this video. I am at the two hour mark now. I was at 158 an hour ago, which was very, very high. And I am predicting that my blood sugar will now be back down to normal. I'm hungry. Let's see, let's see. Oh, 88, so I am back down to normal. So let me munch on these numbers and figure out what this data is telling me and what I wanna take away from it. But so far, the biggest takeaway right now that I can think of is that eating higher carb foods as close to possible in its natural form might spike my blood sugar, but my body brings my blood sugar down beautifully in that two hour mark. So what does that mean? I'm not sure right now, but I will get back to you. So I'm back now after looking over the data and I'm going to put my graph up here of my blood sugar response to the potatoes. And we can see that the spike was smaller with the white potato. A 56 point spike with the white potato versus a 73 point spike with the sweet potato. I'd say that a 17 point difference is pretty significant. So let's get into takeaways and observations. So the first thing that I noticed is that even with such a small portion of meat and salad, I found that the white potato kept me full and satiated for like upwards of three hours, maybe even four hours. Whereas with the sweet potato at that two hour check, I was already feeling really, really hungry. And I assume it's because my body had a much stronger insulin response to the sweet potato, which made my blood sugar drop much faster. Um, with the white potato, I think from the one hour to the two hour mark, my blood sugar dropped 54 points. Whereas with the sweet potato between that one hour and two hour mark, my blood sugar dropped a whole 70 points. So when when our blood sugar drops really quickly, it does elicit a hunger response. But more so than me getting hungry faster with the sweet potato, I think I was just really surprised that the regular potato kept me full for so long. Which leads me to my next thought. I really am starting to wonder if it's possible for me to start incorporating potatoes back into my diet safely. I feel a little bit hesitant saying that out loud because I really did swear off potatoes altogether unless I was having like a moment of weakness where I ate some fries or some mashed potatoes. In my mind, potatoes were just a definite no-go, but now I'm starting to second guess that decision and I'm starting to wonder whether it's necessary for me to have such a firm stance against potatoes. I don't know if I'm just being influenced right now because I am in the middle of reading that book, Mastering Diabetes, but can they be right? Is it possible for me to eat high carb fruits and vegetables and still have balanced blood sugar? I think I may need to test this out in a future video. And my last takeaway, I say this over and over again, but portion size really matters. When I measured out 5.3 ounces of potato, it was a really small piece. Like it wasn't even half a potato, I'd say it was closer to a third. When you go to a steakhouse or something, and let's say you order a baked potato, I mean, they give you a whole potato. And I'm thinking now, like when um, we eat french fries or mashed potatoes, like how many potatoes might there be in that serving? So. I think that if I'm able to stick to, again, one serving size, which now I realize is about one third of a potato, I would be acting much kinder to my body. So I have to keep reminding myself, portion size matters, portion size matters, portion size matters. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me for another blood sugar experiment. And if you found this interesting or helpful, please head to my channel because I have a bunch of other blood sugar experiments, such as testing the effects of white rice versus brown rice on my blood sugar, testing out different types of breads on my blood sugar, and testing out oatmeal. Those are just to name a few. And if you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss upcoming content. All right, thank you again for joining me today, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.